Still, though he did not quite understand why, Komura always felt his tension dissipate when he and his wife were together under one roof. It was the only time he could truly relax. He slept well with her, undisturbed by the strange dreams that had troubled him in the past. But the letter his wife left for him when she vanished five days after the earthquake was different. I am never coming back, she had written, then went on to explain, simply but clearly, why she no longer wanted to live with him. The problem is that you never give me anything, she wrote, or to put it more precisely, you have nothing inside you that you can give me. You are good and kind and handsome, but living with you is like living with a chunk of air. It's not entirely your fault, though. There are lots of women who will fall in love with you, but please don't call me. Just get rid of all the stuff I'm leaving behind. Cold or hot, it was all the same to him. No matter how far you travel, you can never get away from yourself, Shimao had said. The wind. It came from some place unknown to Komura, and it blew past to some place unknown to him. The flames accepted all things in silence, drank them in, understood and forgave. A family, a real family, was probably like this, she thought. All he wanted was to ride around with his friends in his Datsun truck, surf and play the guitar in their amateur band. An easy-going lifestyle that anyone could see was not going to last forever. What a weird guy, thought Junko, but now she was more interested in him than ever. You know, Jun, he said, a fire can be any shape it wants to be. It's free, so it can look like anything at all depending on what's inside the person looking at it. If you get this deep, quiet kind of feeling when you look at a fire, that's because it's showing you the deep, quiet kind of feeling you have inside yourself. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, Jun, but it's no good being too sensible when you're young. It just spoils the fun. I'm in this tight space, in total darkness, and I die little by little. It might not be so bad if I could just suffocate, but it doesn't work that way. A tiny bit of air manages to get in through some crack, so it takes a really long time. I scream but nobody can hear me, and nobody notices I'm missing. It's so cramped in there, I can't move. I squirm and squirm, but the door won't open. The smoky smell of a hundred fires clung to his jacket. She took in a long, deep breath of it. Anyhow, let's wait till the fire burns out, Miyaki said. We built it so we ought to keep it company to the end. Once it goes out and it turns pitch dark, then we can die. I could never live with this man, she thought. I could never get inside his heart, but I might be able to die with him. He walked with the slow pace of someone deep in thought. There is nothing wrong with praying for something, but you must pray for something grander than that, it is wrong to pray for something concrete, with time limits. Not long after he went to middle school, though, Yoshia abandoned his faith. As he awakened to the existence of his own independent ego, he found it increasingly difficult to accept the strict codes of the sect that clashed with ordinary values. But the most fundamental and decisive cause was the unending coldness of the one who was his father, his dark heavy, silent heart of stone. If it was all right for God to test man, why was it wrong for man to test God? What I was chasing in circles must have been the tale of the darkness inside me. I just happened to catch sight of it, and followed it, and clung to it, and in the end let it fly into still deeper darkness. I'm sure I'll never see it again. Yoshia began to enjoy dancing, 
As he let himself go and moved his body in time to the music, he would come to feel that the natural rhythm inside him was pulsing in perfect unison with the basic rhythm of the world. The ebb and flow of the tide, the dancing of the wind across the plains, the course of the stars through the heavens. He felt certain that these things were by no means occurring in places unrelated to him. Dancing, huh? Not a bad idea. Not bad at all. He closed his eyes and, feeling the white light of the moon on his skin, began to dance all by himself. He drew his breath deep into his lungs and exhaled just as deeply. Unable to think of a song to match his mood, he danced in time with the stirring of the grass and the flowing of the clouds. Before long, he began to feel that someone, somewhere, was watching him. His whole body, his skin, his bones, told him with absolute certainty that he was in someone's field of vision. So what, he thought. Let them look if they want to, whoever they are. All God's children can dance. Animals lurked in the forest like Trump loyal figures. Some of them horrific beasts he had never seen before. He would eventually have to pass through the forest, but he felt no fear. Of course, the forest was inside him, he knew, and it made him who he was. The beasts were ones that he himself possessed. How long he went on dancing, Yoshia could not tell but it was long enough for him to perspire under the arms, and then it struck him what lay buried far down under the earth, on which his feet were so firmly planted. The ominous rumbling of the deepest darkness, secret rivers that transported desire, slimy creatures wreathing, the lair of earthquakes ready to transform whole cities into mounds of rubble. These two were helping to create the rhythm of the earth. Never mind, he said, this life is nothing but a short, painful dream. Our hearts are not stones. A stone may disintegrate in time and lose its outward form, but hearts never disintegrate. They have no outward form, and whether good or evil, we can always communicate them to one another. All God's children can dance. A gust of wind set the leaves of grass to dancing and celebrated the grass's song before it died. Everything had gone well for her until her father died of cancer. Everything without exception. But then the stage suddenly turned dark and by the time she noticed that her father had vanished forever from her life, everything was headed in the wrong direction. It was as if a whole new story had started with a whole new plot. Was that some kind of fortune telling? Satsuki asked when they were back in the car. No, doctor, it was not fortune telling. Just as you treat people's bodies, she treats people's spirits. She predicts their dreams, mostly. You are a beautiful person, doctor. Clear-headed, strong, but you seem always to be dragging your heart along the ground. From now on, Little by little, you must prepare yourself to face death. If you devote all of your future energy to living, you will not be able to die well. You must begin to shift gears, a little at a time. Living and dying are, in a sense, of equal value. That night, lying in a broad, pristine bed, Satsuki wept. She recognized that she was headed toward death. She recognized that she had a hard, white stone inside herself. She recognized that a scaly, green snake was lurking somewhere in the dark. She thought about the child to which she never gave birth. She had destroyed that child, flung it down a bottomless well, and then she had spent thirty years hating one man. She had hoped that he would die in agony. In order to bring that about, she had gone so far as to wish in the depths of her heart for an earthquake. In a sense, she told herself, I am the one who caused that earthquake. He turned my heart into a stone. He turned my body to stone. In the distant mountains, the grey monkeys were silently staring at her. Living and dying are, in a sense, of equal value.
Please, doctor, don't tell me any more. You should have your dream, as the old woman told you to. I understand how you feel, but if you put those feelings into words, they will turn into lies. Frog rolled his large eyes. To tell you the truth, Mr. Katagiri, he said, I am the one who will do all the fighting, but I can't do it alone. This is the key thing. I need your courage and your passion for justice. I need you to stand behind me and say, Way to go, Frog. You're doing great. I know you can win. You're fighting the good fight. I'm going to die, he thought. Frog had said that true terror is the kind that men feel toward their imagination. Katagiri cut the switch of his imagination and sank into a weightless silence. Junpei is telling me the story of Masakichi the bear, Sala said. He's the all-time number one honey bear, but he doesn't have any friends. Don't worry about me, he said. I'm awake till the sun comes up and the roads are empty this time of night. It's no big deal. You were working on a story? Junpei nodded. How's it going? Like always, I write them, they print them, nobody reads them. I read them. All of them. Thanks, you're a nice person. All he wanted was to study literature and then to become a novelist. Junpei did not understand why Takatsuki had any interest in befriending him. Junpei was the kind of person who liked to sit alone in his room reading books or listening to music, and he was terrible at sports. Awkward with strangers, he rarely made friends. Still, for whatever reason, Takatsuki seemed to have decided the first time he saw Junpei in class that he was going to make him a friend. He tapped Junpei on the shoulder and said, Hey, let's get something to eat. And by the end of the day, they had opened their hearts to each other. Junpei was a born short story writer. He would shut himself in his room, let everything else go to hell, and turn out a first draft in three days of concentrated effort. After four more days of polishing, he would give the manuscript to Sayoko and his editor to read, then do more polishing in response to their remarks. Basically, though, the battle was won or lost in that first week. That was when everything that mattered in the story came together. His personality was suited to this way of working. Total concentration of effort over a few short days. Total concentration of imagery and language. Junpei felt only exhaustion when he thought about writing a novel. How could he possibly maintain and control that mental concentration for months at a time? That kind of pacing eluded him. Sometimes, maybe once a month, he would wake at an odd time in the night with a feeling close to panic. I'm never going anywhere, he would tell himself. I can struggle all I want, but I'm never going anywhere. Then, he would either force himself to go to his desk and write, or drink until he could no longer stay awake. Except for these times, he lived a quiet, untroubled life. Whatever distinguishes one lump of flesh from another when we're alive, we're all the same once we're dead, he said. Just used up shells. Junpei did not try to call his parents. The rift was too deep and had gone on too long for there to be any hope of reconciliation. He flew back to Tokyo and resumed his normal life. He never turned on the television and hardly looked at the newspaper. Whenever anyone mentioned the earthquake, he would clam up. It was an echo from a past that he had buried long ago. He hadn't set foot on those streets since his graduation, but still, the sight of the destruction laid bare, raw wounds hidden somewhere deep inside him. The lethal, gigantic catastrophe seemed to change certain aspects of his life, quietly but from the ground up. Junpei felt an entirely new sense of isolation. I have no roots, he thought. I'm not connected to anything. Finding one person to love over the long haul of one's life was quite a different matter from finding friends. Junpei closed his eyes and thought about the long stretch of time that had passed through him. He did not want to think of it as something he had merely used up without any meaning. I want to write stories that are different from the ones I've written so far, Junpei thought. I want to write about people who dream and wait for the night to end, who long for the light so they can hold the ones they love. But right now I have to stay here and keep watch over this woman and this girl. I will never let anyone, not anyone, try to put them into that crazy box. Not even if the sky should fall or the earth crack open with a roar. <laughs>